Ladies and gentlemen, a pretty major garden update has made its way onto the Alpha Network and people are talking. My name is Derelius, welcome back to Skyblock News and let's launch right into it. So this update is pretty massive, and in order to get into it, we need to talk about the general stuff first. Normally, the garden doesn't really have too much special stuff going on. Obviously, there are the garden contests, or the farming contests, and the little visitors that show up, but generally, farming is just a pretty mind-numbing activity. You farm, and you get crops. That's about it. They are trying to change that with this update by adding in this new feature called pests. And in order to show you what they are, we need to come over to the two new NPCs, Pest Hunter Philip and Pest Hunter Pamela. Speaking to Philip, we can see some of the new features associated with this update. The Vacuum Bag, the Pest Hunter Bonus, the Contest Protection, and the Handbook here, as well as a little shop that has some new items. We'll get into this one at a time. To start off, we're going to want to look at the Handbook. Pests rarely spawn when you break crops in your garden. People are saying it's around a 5 minute timer, but this can be modified with various upgrades and debuffs. They can only be damaged with vacuums, which can be obtained and upgraded through the SkyMart system. There are 10 unique types of pests, each with their own useful drops. Get rid of them before they overrun your garden, or your farming fortune will diminish. As you can see, if you click on this, there are 10 pests associated with this update. The fly, the cricket, locusts, rats, mosquitoes, worms, mites, moths, slugs, and beetles. These all have specific drops, which we'll get into in a minute. I know I'm saying that a lot, but this update is truly huge. So Pest Master Philip mentioned the SkyMart, what's going on over there? And as we can see, there are a few new items associated with the SkyMart, notably the Sprayinator item and a bunch of vacuums. This first vacuum you get during the quest line, but you can also rebuy it here for 100 copper. It does 100 damage per second to pests. It works exactly the same as the Rift vacuum. You just sort of right click and it sucks in the pest and you kind of have to look around a little bit, but that's really about it. The upgrade for this one isn't too special, aside from the fact that it adds a little pest tracker. It makes it a lot easier to actually locate these pests. I recommend getting this upgrade. Moving over, we have the Hyper Vacuum, which does 150 damage. By the way, the Turbo one did 120 damage. And then we keep moving down the list with the Infinite Vacuum, giving you 200 damage. These upgrades, by the way, for the first couple, don't require anything except copper. This upgrade here, the Infinite Vacuum, requires the Chirping Stereo, which we'll get into in a minute, the Hyper Vacuum, and a thousand total copper, and the Huvarius here requires an Atmospherics Filter, an Infinite Vacuum, and 2500 copper. This final upgrade does something pretty unique. It has a filter on it, which gives you buffs depending on the season. These last for around 30 hours, as do every Skyblock season, and give you the following buffs. In the spring, you'll get 15 Farming Fortune. In the summer, you'll get 15 Wisdom. Pests will spawn 15% more often in the autumn. And in the winter, visitors will give 5% more copper. As we can see here, there's also the Sprayinator item, which we'll get into in a second. Upon speaking to Pamela for the first time, she'll hand you this item here, the Sprayinator. This can be used to spray garden plots with various materials in order to attract specific pests. You can right-click it in order to spray a selected material on a garden plot. Certain materials are more likely to attract specific pests, and the effect lasts 30 minutes. You can cycle through it by left-clicking, and it's not really too special aside from that, but what it does allow you to do is once you've actually sprayed a plot, that plot will actually give you 50 bonus pest chance and is 25% more likely to spawn pests. This makes it incredibly useful if you're trying to farm specific pests, which is a good thing to do for specific items that you may want. We'll get into those items in a minute. Aside from the pest system, there are also a bunch of new shop items associated with the update. Clicking on Philip and going over to his wares, we can see he has a new set of items. A badge, a ring, and an artifact. In order to get these upgraded, you need to exchange pests with him, which you can transfer in with the empty vacuum bag button. Nothing too special about it, just get 250, get 100,000 coins, and you get a ton of bonus pest chance. Moving over to Anita, she actually has a bunch of interesting items here. Notably, a new talisman, a new ring, and a new artifact. 
These are upgraded the same way you would think of anything else in her shop, with medals and tickets. You can see the amounts right here, 2 bronze and 32 tickets for the talisman, 2 silver and 64 tickets for the ring, and 2 gold medals and also 100 tickets for the artifact. She also has this new item called the personal best item. You need 2 gold medals and 64 tickets, but it gives you access to this menu, which allows you to gain bonus farming fortune depending on how much you have gotten in a farming contest. This goes up to around 100 farming fortune per item in each contest, which means you can basically get a free 100 farming fortune if you fully max it out. I think a lot of players are going to be around 30 to 50 here. Most people aren't going to have the full 100. I don't even think by like being a crazy sweat lord you can get that high. I think the highest I've seen legitimately is around the 40s to mid 50 range. But who knows, maybe this will be more possible as time goes on. Before getting into the drops of the pests themselves, there are some small things I want to go over. Giving a pest to Philip over here actually gives you a certain amount of farming fortune for 30 minutes. This is based on the amount that you've given in and has a maximum of 100 bonus farming fortune. So there is obviously a reason to participate in this stuff if you are someone who likes to farm. The other things that they have done are basically making it so that if you have too many pests on your garden, there are a level of debuffs that get applied to you. If you have three, I think it's pretty minor, it's around 5% loss in farming fortune, but it stacks really hard. Around five, you lose about 30 to 40% of your farming fortune, and beyond that, I think it's pretty much nothing. This is probably done to combat macroing, but I don't think going about it in this way is the best idea, as it kind of forces people into doing the stuff that maybe they don't want to do, and it makes farming a little less brainless, which I think it's fine that farming is kind of brainless. That was kind of the whole bit. A lot of the skills do require you to look around and do stuff, and them doing this obviously combats macroing, but it does damage farming's original identity. Another thing they did was make it so you have to like jiggle your screen a little bit every like 15 minutes or so. That's an anti-macro thing, but from what a lot of people have told me, that doesn't really combat macroing at all, so in my opinion, they should probably just get rid of it. Apparently the people's macros can already just go around that and do the little wiggle thing, and it's not really a big deal. I kind of understand the point of what they're going for in this update, and obviously there's still more to talk about with the pests and the drops they have, but I just feel like this is a little misguided. I think for the most part it's fine though, I like the idea of pests, I like all the new items, and I like the new ways to get farming fortune, and I also like another change that they did. For example, coming over to Jacob, we can see that there are two new brackets, the diamond and platinum brackets, and also they made the gold bracket for any farming contest 10%, instead of the 5% I think it was. This is really good, it's going to help out new players a lot. We don't know what these two new brackets do yet, they might just be aesthetic at this current moment in time. Maybe they'll have some special rewards associated with it. Regardless, I still think this is really cool, adds to the system, makes it a lot better. But I do think some parts of the update, specifically related to how it interacts on your garden, I think could be changed. Something someone said that I think would be awesome is imagine if it was kind of like the park where you could pay like a certain amount of coins and it would be like the raining system. And while it was raining, you didn't actually get any pests on your garden or if you did, they just didn't bother you or they didn't do anything, I don't know. I think in reality, it'd just be better to remove them during that time. It puts a little active feature on there. And also, if the admins wanted to combat macroing, just make it so whenever you click that button for a long period of time, let's say you set it up for two hours, you're put onto a little short list that the admins can inspect more, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know if that's something that's reasonably possible or feasible or anything like that, but I think it's infinitely better than just forcing everyone to participate in this system, even if they might not want to. I think at the end of the day, a lot of people are going to warm up to this, and especially after telling you guys what the pest like drops are, I think it's pretty cool, but yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. Finally, we're on to the items dropped from pests, and there are quite a few things to talk about here. I think the most interesting thing here is that there's a wide variety in what is actually dropped. I only have a few of the mobs unlocked here, but I do know the vast majority of the drops because obviously other people have found out about them, so let's get right into it. For the rat, the rat drops the rat pet. Shockingly enough, there is nothing else special about him, he's just a funny little guy who drops a funny little rat pet. But he also drops something pretty interesting, the Rodent Revolution Vinyl. We'll get into what those are in a minute. Moving back over to the fly, we have the Beady Eyes item. Now this one's pretty interesting, the fly and another pet 
the Mosquito drop another item, the Clipped Wings, which are both Reforges. If I go into the Bazaar and I look up, like, Reforges, hold on, give me a second, it takes me a second for these things. Let me look up Clipped Wings, there we go. We can see that it applies the Buzzing Reforge when combined with the Vacuums for the Clipped Wings, it gives you speed and doubles the damage of the Vacuums. Now, that sounds pretty great, but then you can also look at the other one, which is the BD Eyes. And you'll notice that this one kind of sucks. It gives you 25 extra damage to vacuums. It gives you 50 intelligence. And that's about it. Much worse than doubling the damage of a 250 damage item. This one needs a pretty major change. I would just completely change this item around. Probably make it a buff to the actual past drop rate. But yeah, the BDIs are effectively useless in their current form. The Chirping Stereo is the rare drop from the Cricket, and it basically allows you to collect vinyls from pretty much every pest and put them into the Stereo, and then you'll get a percentage boost to that type of pest. So if you have the Rodent Revolution one, you'll get a bonus to those drops. I don't know why you would want more rat pets, but hey, it's something you can do. In terms of things you probably do want, you probably want the Slug Pet. This one drops directly from, you guessed it, Slugs. It's a 0.05% chance, it cannot be upgraded from Epic via Cat, so keep that in mind. But if you get a legendary version of it, you can get these bonuses on screen. Defense, Intelligence, a percentage less time to catch for Slugfish, bonus Pest Chance, and also when farming in a plot affected by a Sprayinator, you get a certain amount of farming fortune, which is really, really cool. I think this item is going to be highly sought after, especially since it buffs a lot of things from this update. People are going to want this thing like crazy, and it totally makes sense. Mods have a very rare chance to drop this item on screen now, the Wriggling Larva. Consider this like another one of the burger items that they've added recently, and by burger item I mean McRubber Burgers from like the Rift. Basically, this item you can consume to permanently gain bonus pest chance. You can consume up to five of them before the side of them makes you too sick, yada yada. You know how this works. It's a pretty interesting item. I think it's, you know, fairly neat. There's also a new enchant added to the game, which I think is really, really awesome. This one can be applied to armor. Basically allows you to gain bonus chance of the pests dropping, which is really, really cool. The last one was from Beetles, if it wasn't already obvious from the fact that it said it came from Beetles on it, but this one's from The Worm. This is the Bookworm's favorite book, Shocker I Know. When applied to a vacuum, it gives a bonus damage, it can be applied up to five times. This is kind of like that pickaxe upgrade we got from the Rift. I'll note that a lot of these items feel like Rift items, but not really. I feel like some of these might have been just Rift rejects just brought over to the garden, but hey, it's what we got. And that is pretty much it aside from the Locust. The Locust actually drops Sunder 6 books, which aren't too special, if I'm honest. They're probably one of the least unique things that we've gotten aside from the Rat Pet literally dropping rats. But that's really about it in terms of the 10 items. I think that most of them are pretty unique. I like the stereo a lot. I like the ideas behind it. I like that you can have a reason to collect them repeatedly because they also drop items that can be used for the Sprayinator. And all of them drop the items that benefit all of the mobs, by the way. It's not like one specifically benefits one more than others. Some other pretty interesting things they did for the garden. They made it so that when a contest is going on, you can actually see exactly what percentage of the way you are to a gold medal or any medal for that matter. You can see that you're like 92.4% or top 41.7%. That stuff's all visible. They also made some other pretty interesting changes. They made it so in the calendar, you can actually see, if I'm not mistaken, which one actually gives you the farming buff. But I don't have the farming buff, so I can't see that. Essentially how it works is there's a certain farming bonus you can get during a, you know, a random bonus depending on the level of artifact you have per contest. This is based on the artifact, the talisman, all this stuff. I don't have this item, but I can't see it. But basically how it would work is if you were in this menu and you were hovering over it, you'd be able to see, oh, potato is going to give me a bonus today, or oh, wheat's going to give me a bonus. That's really the special thing there. I know this was obviously a very long video, which is not something I'm used to normally doing, but I will say I think this update is on a decent track. I will say I really don't like how this is forced. I would love to see some sort of garden, basically rain system where you could prevent it from happening and you wouldn't have to bother with it. They want a combat macroing. I know. I get it. I completely understand. 
make the people who don't participate in the system be put on a short list where it's easier for the admins to inspect them. I don't care. People who are legit should not be negatively impacted like this. Farming should probably not change too much as a skill. If they want to do this, fine. Add it to public islands. Add it to something different. Garden is like the only way to actually massively improve your ability to farm, and they have changed it pretty significantly here. And don't get me wrong, I think a lot of what is shown in this update is great. I think the new farming fortune is awesome. I think all the benefits are awesome. A lot of the new pests drop a decent amount of farming XP, which is great. However, I just think that for people who don't want to participate, they shouldn't have to. I'm not saying the system shouldn't exist, because I imagine a lot of people really like this. They think this is super neat. It makes farming a little more interesting, and that's fine. But some people care about downtime. They don't want to be getting away from their farm every 10 minutes in order to hunt down a pest. They don't want to have their farming fortune reduced because they don't want to chase down the pests. That is a little much. In my opinion, they could probably go to a middle ground answer here where they allow people to spend like in-game coins, like 5,000 coins per 5 minutes, and you just don't have that happen. And you get put on a short list for that time to where if the admins are hunting down, you know, macros, you're the first person they look at. I don't think people would care about being watched in-game if it meant that they didn't have to participate in this system. And some people just, just don't want to. They just do not want to. And that's fine. We should allow that to happen. Normally, I'm very much pro-change in video games, and I do like a lot of the change that we've seen here, but I don't like it when it directly affects negatively people during the change. If it's negatively affecting something that exists, and it's a change specifically made to make a piece of content better, it's probably not actually making it better, it's just making it a little more convoluted. Things are different when they add new content. If this was a new island, I would be totally for it, but the fact that it's on the garden still, eh, not really the best. I've also seen a lot of issues with like pathfinding. Some of the paths get lodged in like stacked farms, and that's going to be a mess by itself, so I know people are going to be definitely pissed about that. Leave your thoughts down below, I know obviously it's going to be... Uh, you know, the most civil thoughts in the world, no one's going to be angry at all, that would never happen in a skyblock comment section, but yeah. At the end of the day, my name is Dorelius, thank you so much for watching this video till the end, and look to the future fellas, because I will see you then.